Hello and welcome back to our online sessions tutorial series. In this episode we're going to work on our ready status. So at the moment our characters can indicate when they're ready, but we want the host to only be able to start the match when they are all ready. We're also going to have some extra little features in there such as locking the game to new players when it has started. So let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is go and set up the ready up status. So for this we're going to go to the lobby host screen and on here we're going to create on the graph a new function. And this function is going to be the check ready status. And on the check ready status we need to be able to go through each of the players that are connected to the game. Now currently we have really got something set up from previous episodes that we can use. So at the moment we're doing update player list every time the player list updates and changes in some kind of way. So part of this, we have to take the array information here and store this in a variable. So I'm going to take this player info and I'll promote that to a variable. This is all the player information we need for our game. Here we are. So with that in mind, we can now use that in our check ready status. We can go to ready status and in here we can then take that player info and do a for each loop. And this for each loop is going to go through each one and check their status for ready. So to do that we're going to drag from the blue pin and break it. And that gives us their name, their is ready status and their character they've chosen. So if it is ready we're going to make a little branch here and put that in there like so. Now for this function I'm going to create a local variable. So I'm going to go down to my variable list and create a local variable and this is going to be all players ready and this is going to be by default set to true then when it comes through this status uh, check here for each player when it is ready that's going to not do anything different but if it goes to false we're going to set is all players ready to false now because it's only turning off in one direction it can't go back on once it's turned off that's it it won't turn back on so when it's completed the search we're going to do a return node and we're going to return the all players ready variable. And we'll leave it like that. Okay, so that is our status check there. So now we want to be able to do that check. Now, what I'm going to do is on this update player list on completed, I'm going to call that function ready status check. So what I want to do is use this boolean to decide what the appearance of my start button is going to be. And that's by disabling it. So we're going to take this start much button out and we're going to do set enabled and connect that to our boolean there. Then I just want to design what it's going to look like when it's disabled. So I go to design of view, go to its style and appearance, and we're going to change its disabled appearance here. So we're going to make sure it's drawn as a box and the tint I'm going to change to dark gray and leave it like that. And I'll just make sure it's enabled at start here. Yep, make sure that's enabled. Uh, so that's going to turn it off and on as we need to. Okay, so let's check that out. If I hit save on this and hit play, we should see in our host the start match button has been disabled. Okay, and I can't click it at all. Now, obviously, the host here should always be ready. So we we'll make sure the host is set that to be ready. So to do that, let's go into our lobby host screen. So not the host screen, we want the game mode. So in the game mode, when players join, we need to determine whether or not it's the server that's joined and change their status uh, automatically. So we've got two things we need to do here. The first one is we're going to do is update player list. So I'm just going to bring this down, give it a bit more space, and bring this down here. <clears throat> so I'll take this array element here, and I'm going to check if this is a local uh, controller. Now, the reason why this would work is because the local controller for this game mode is the server because the server is the only one that has a game mode. So local controller, it means the server's one. With that in mind, we can put that into a branch. So if it's false and not a server, we can do as we have been doing here. 
Uh, but if it's true, I'm going to take the array element, which is the controller, and we're going to do set player info and plug that into true. And then the array element here is going to come, not array element, the player info here is going to come out, and we'll do make player info struct. And we'll put in the name here of host. And tick is ready. And then we want to add that to this array again. So we're going to take this and this, copy, paste it on the end, and hook that up into there. So it gets added to that list. Uh, and that'll do for this. Uh, next, we need to make it work for the on post login as well. So when we cast the lobby controller here, this is where we want to set up this stuff on this side. So let's take this and move this along. And I'm going to take the as lobby controller and again check if it's local and put that into a branch. If it's not local, it'll be doing this add here. And we'll move that down like this. And but if it is local, i.e. the server, we're going to take this out and do set player info. And then do make player info struct. And again, set it to say host and is ready. This will go into true and it will have its own version of the ad here. So you can copy that paste that here and that in there and this in here and then that will connect that back up to the delay here and, and that should do it for this so hit compile and save and let's test that out and when I join the match I start off as host and green and my button is active because I'm literally the only one in there so I click join match and when it comes up Yep, hit join and we should see the button change to be not available because I'm not ready. But if I click is ready, that will change and the start match will allow me to click on it and take me to the game. So the other issue we've got uh, that we want to fix here is the ability for stopping players coming into the level when it's already started. So for example, if I go to this one here, click join match and find the game that's running here. I can click join and join the match mid game, which you may not want and most games don't. So what I'm going to do here is lock it off. So how do we go about stopping a player entering the game uh, when it's really started? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the uh, go to the lobby host screen and on here we need to dictate how many players we're expecting to be in our game. Now, now whilst we are doing this we also want to stop anyone new joining the game uh, when the game's already started so when you click start match over here we want to first of all destroy the session so just right click do destroy a session and this requires the player controller so just drag the player controller in and that'll be it and what this will do basically is to, to stop advertising the session on the subsystem. So Steam will no longer know that this session exists, uh, and but all the players that are connected should stay connected. Uh, on the success of this, that will go down to the execute command for the server travel. And that will travel the players along to the next level. So anyone new that joins and loads up the game after this has happened won't find this in the search box. However, those who already have already passed and found the sessions, the sessions containing like the IP addresses and, and things like that to join the games, they will still have access to join the sessions. So how do you stop players who uh, may join a session when they don't, they're not meant to? So what we're going to do here is do a verification check. And that verification check is to check the number of players we're expecting to find in our match. So we're going to lock it down. And the way we do that is by using this console command here. And we're going to add an extra option to this. So I'm going to go to add pin. And in the C pin here, I'm going to put a question mark for an option. And we're going to call this one play account. And I'm going to put a space in. And then I'm going to add another pin. And this other pin is going to be the number of players we're expecting here. So currently, we've got our player list storing on our 
um, game mode, uh, lobby game mode, okay, it's players. So that's what we want to get access to. So let's go back to here and get game mode and cast that to our lobby game mode. And for this, I'm just going to make this a pure cast. Um, so right click on that and convert to pure cast. And from there, I just want to get a hold of the uh, connected players. And more importantly, I want to get the length of that. So this is how many players we're expecting to see in our game. So we do this and plug that into there. Okay, so now we're going to get options sent over to our game mode in the actual game. So what we have to do now is handle it on the new game mode in the actual level and to check how many players we've got joining us. So I've got my third person game mode here, which is the one I'm using for my main game. And you should have an on post login event. If you don't, make sure you've got one. And at the start here, we're getting new player. On new player, we're going to uh, get the player list that we have here which is being added to it over here and we will check the length of this and the length we want to check is going to be against the options so we're going to go get options and you'll see the option string available and this is the string that we just wrote that's going to come across so we're going to drag from there and we're going to pass string uh, pass parameter value and here we can put in the parameter name for our option so here I'm going to type in player count and it's important that that is exactly the same as it was on our lobby host screen. So make sure it's called exactly the same. You don't need a question mark, just the player count. So on the back on the game mode here, we've got player count. And this is going to output it as a string. Obviously we want it as a integer, but that's fine because it will convert it for us. So let's take the length here and we're going to take a less than integer. And we're going to check out value into this here. And it, as you see, it converts it to integer for you. So if we're expecting two players to join the game, uh, it's going to know that we're looking for two players. So if a third player tries to join the game, so midway through the game, uh, it won't actually let them. So on here, we need to branch this. And if it's less than two, uh, or less than however many we're expecting, we carry on as normal. However, if it's false, we have to tell our player character to that has just joined to leave and go back to main menu. So what we're going to do is going to go to the custom player controller, which is the one that's being used for in the game. Because remember, they're spawning into the game. And in here, we're going to right click and we're going to create a custom event. And we call this one leave session in progress. And this is going to be replicated to be on the owning client. From here, we're going to tell it to destroy session. Self. No, 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 no. no. So here, I'm just going to tell it to open level. And I'm going to choose the main menu. And that's doing. Going to go back to my game mode, and on the branch on the force here, we're going to get the player controller. Oh, sorry, not get player controller. We're going to drag from new player here, and cast to our custom player controller. Plugging that into the force branch, and from there, we're going to do leave session in progress and save that okay so let's test this out so I'm gonna push play on here and here's our three characters we're gonna join host match there join match here and click join match here and I'm gonna join one of the characters here so join and I'm not gonna join this one so this is what I mean if you keep the search results here and click ready and then launch the match they'll go to the level like so uh, but this one when I hit join I'll click try to join it and get kicked back to menu so he can't join the game that's already in progress and if he tries to go back to join match 
because that destroy session has happened that session will no longer be listed here as part of the steam subsystem and there you go thanks very much for watching in the next episode we're going to go over how to quit the game midway so either as the client or as the host now a special thing about the host is when they quit the game you want to send everyone out back to menu as well so join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan lady where you can watch that part plus many of my videos before anyone else thanks very much for watching and i'll see you all next time bye everyone